out on, um, on the mat in a reclined position. So if you'd like to make your way down to the mat, um, you can certainly be seated or um, in a different position if you prefer, but we're gonna start out as a group, we'll start out in this reclined position if that feels okay for you. So just checking in a moment. and determining if this reclined position is best for you right now. And if it is, settling in here, and if it's not, take the time to readjust, finding a better position. I'm taking a moment right away to zoom in to the sensations of breath within the body. Breath as an anchor to this moment. A lot of what we'll be doing today will be work with the shoulders, the chest, the upper body. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the idea of being open, having an open heart. So the invitation is here to, to ask if there's something that you'd like to be a little bit more open to in your life, in your body, in your day to day. And there's no right or wrong answer, of course. It's just a simple exploration. An asking, a noticing, a receiving. Whatever that experience was, bringing that along with you through the practice today, just kind of sealing in that intention. We'll come back to it throughout the practice. And on the next inhalation, we're going to reach the arms up towards the ceiling, keeping the arms and hands about shoulder width distance apart, but then lifting the shoulders and shoulder blades ever so slightly tops of the shoulder blades up off of the mat. And then the next time you exhale, plugging the shoulders, shoulder blades back down onto the mat. So small range of motion, lifting up, and then setting back down, plugging in on the exhalation. Getting that movement through the shoulders, through the chest a little bit, moving with the breath, starting out nice and easy, inhaling up and exhaling, plugging back down and really feeling that sense perhaps of plugging in and heaviness as you release the shoulders and shoulder blades back down onto the mat. With the next exhalation, just staying here, allowing the shoulders to be heavy on the mat. We'll take a few circles on the ceiling with the arms, moving the arms open. Taking that circle and then reversing direction. Starting to warm up a bit more through the chest, through the shoulders. And 
from here, we're going to bring the arms into goal post arms. So the elbows are bent, backs of the hands rest down onto the mat, chest is open, spine is neutral, neck is long. Feel a sense of heaviness through the shoulder blades, the hips, the back, feet. The backs of the hands, the forearms, stretching open through the chest. And then as you exhale, bring the forearms together. And as you inhale, open back up. Keeping the spine neutral, the neck neutral, the low body heavy, and moving with the breath, going at your own pace. The eyes can be closed or open. If the eyes are closed, it's kind of interesting to see if you can bring the arms together at the same pace and see if there's a certain part of the hand or the elbow or the forearm that touches first and then another part that touches last. See if they're pretty even or if one is in front or behind the other. From here, we'll pause with the arms open in those goal post arms. And we'll take the right arm and turn it down so that the palm of the hand faces down towards the mat. So a rotation of that arm. The left palm of the hand is still facing up towards the sky. So the arms are doing two opposite things. And then we'll switch sides so now the right palm of the hand is up and the left palm of the hand is down. The shoulders are rotating in opposite directions. And then taking that a few more times at your own pace. Be reconnecting here with the intention to being open. Being open to what is here in this moment. Being receptive. And then from here, we're going to take the arms and stretch them away from the shoulders. The right arm reaches right. The left arm reaches left, fingertips spread, fingers reach in opposition. And then with the next exhalation, we'll give ourselves a hug and walk the fingers a little bit. Once the fingers touch, just kind of walk them a little bit closer towards the spine, obviously, unless you have super flexible body or really long arms, they're not going to come to the spine, but just kind of walking a little bit closer in that direction, walking the fingertips kind of towards one another, spreading the shoulder blades apart. Hands are kind of under the armpits, just kind of reaching around towards the shoulder blades. Double check in with the neck here, making sure the neck is still long. And then inhale, open back up. And with the exhale, we'll take the opposite arm on top. Once again, just kind of walking the fingers along the shoulder blades, working them a little bit closer towards one another, feeling that stretch in the upper back. And then inhaling, opening back up again. Bringing the arms to your sides, finding a neutral spine. And we're gonna come into a bridge pose, but the focus is not gonna be so much on getting a lot of height. Um, just taking it nice and easy, pressing the feet down onto the mat and articulating the spine up just a little ways, just kind of up so that the um, hips are up off of the mat a little bit, neck is neutral. And from here, you can walk the fingertips 
um, and hands underneath you and lace the fingers, lace the fingers so that the pinky edge of the hand is down and the thumb edge is up. Keep that lift in the hip and find that openness through the chest as the shoulders press down and the chest lifts up. Arms are still connected with the mat and you're just using that to get a little more openness here through the chest, keeping that neck in neutral. And then shimmy the shoulder blades kind of back apart again. Unlace the fingers, take the hands to your sides and articulate the spine all the way back down onto the mat. From here, we're taking the hands onto the knees and hugging the knees in towards the chest. So we're going to take the right knee and hug it in and take the left knee and push it away. And then we're gonna circle that right knee away from the body and circle the left knee kind of back in so that the legs are going in opposition. So you can just kind of keep this movement um, as if you were circling the knees, like how we often do, except we're taking them in opposite directions. So I'm pushing that left knee away, I'm hugging that right knee in, and then circling them away from each other in opposition. It's a little bit of a different way to get into the hips and kind of explore how that feels in the mind to uh, do that in opposite directions. And then from here, we'll pause back at center. We'll hug that left knee in, push the right knee away, and then circle the knees again in opposite directions. So one is circling one way, the other is circling the other way. Feet can be flexed here. You can take it a little slower, a little faster, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be um, a little bit clumsy and that's all right. We can be open and receptive to that experience too. And coming back to center, placing the left foot down onto the mat, we're going to take the right ankle and cross it just on top of the left knee. And then we're gonna bring, um, without using our hands, we're just gonna bring that left thigh bone and kind of bring it in and up. And then take a little circular motion um, with the legs in this figure four configuration. So circling the legs first in one direction and then circling them in the other direction. You can keep that left foot flexed, keep the spine pretty neutral. You don't have to get a huge range of motion here. And really exploring that range of motion, not forcing anything. Being receptive to the stretch as best as possible. And then from there, go ahead and take our traditional figure four stretch, recline pigeon, hugging the back of that left leg in and maybe taking just a little more side to side movement here. Just a little rock side to side. We don't need to go for a super deep stretch just yet. We'll come back to this one towards the end of the practice and hold it a little bit more traditionally like we normally do. Just exploring that space for now. And coming back, releasing down and crossing that left ankle now, just on top of the right knee. Hands can be at your sides, kind of plug the back body down onto the mat. And then just with the strength of your legs, taking that right leg a little bit closer towards the rest of the body and beginning to circle the legs around. Core is a bit engaged, just to kind of stay steady through the upper body. And then switching directions. Just kind of being curious about that range of motion there. We'll grab a hold of the back of the right leg now, hugging everything in and taking that little kind of gentle rock side to side here. 
We're not trying to go for like the deepest stretch in the world, just warming up and exploring that space. See how the hips feel today. Take note. I did a ton of walking yesterday, so mine are a little bit tight. And it's just meeting myself where I am. No need to be resistant of what is. Kind of that kind practice of just being receptive and meeting ourselves as we are. And from here, releasing that. If anything kind of needs to be wiggled or shaked out a little bit, feel free to sway a little side to side. And then we'll begin to make our way up to a seated position. Hands can come to the knees here and we're going to find a nice tall spine and begin to take a circular movement through the upper body. So noticing that in the shoulders and in the upper back as you rotate, eyes can be closed or open here. Feeling that through the neck. And then reversing direction. Bending through the elbows, straightening through the elbows as you move, kind of getting that sensation of the shoulders and chest warming up. And then releasing from that and sitting up nice and tall. Arms will stretch open and we're going to take the left elbow underneath the right for eagle arms. If that does not feel good in your body, take opposite hands to opposite shoulders and you can still have that left elbow underneath the right. Lengthening through the crown of the head, lifting the fingertips up towards the ceiling, lifting the arms, the um, forearms up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, taking the elbows kind of down, the elbows and the upper arms down towards the chest, rounding through the upper back. And then as you inhale, lifting the fingertips and taking those upper arms away from the chest, away from the belly, taking the gaze perhaps up towards the ceiling, and then taking that maybe one or two more times, exhaling, rounding the upper back and inhaling, lifting. Feeling that stretch between the shoulder blades, feeling that stretch in the chest. And then we'll open up into goal post arms. And then from there, taking the right elbow underneath the left or opposite hands to opposite shoulders, reaching the fingertips, reaching the forearms up towards the ceiling, maybe taking the gaze up as well. And then as you exhale, rounding the upper back, taking those upper arms towards the chest, tucking the chin, feeling that stretch in the upper back, and inhale to lift. And this is a perfectly fine time to be a little bit curious about that range of motion too. Perhaps it feels really good today to stay in this more kind of crouching position, or perhaps it feels better to stay lifting. That's totally fine. You can pause a little bit longer. You don't have to keep moving. And then we'll inhale, open back up. And I'm just gonna turn the other direction um, just in case my words aren't descriptive enough. So you can take your hands to your um, low back and lace the fingers. And from here, you can be um, seated cross-legged or you can be seated um, in a more of a kneeling position. I know this one is not comfortable for everyone. Um, either position is fine. And we're going to draw the shoulder blades towards one another and, and lift the chest. And we're going to take that um, right hand over towards the left hip. And then we're starting to draw the elbows towards one another. 
lifting the chest, opening up. And you can also take that left ear over towards the left shoulder for a little bit more of a stretch through the side of the neck. And then bringing the head back upright and taking the gaze out over that left shoulder. Continuing to encourage the right shoulder open. And then coming back to center. Releasing those hands, drawing the thumbnails down on the back, lifting the chest, and then taking those hands over towards the opposite hip. So from here, um, you can keep your neck and um, crown of the head reaching up towards the ceiling, or you can begin to take your left ear over towards your left shoulder getting a little bit more of a stretch through that side. Reaching down. And then coming back to center and taking that gaze out now over that right shoulder. Encouraging the left shoulder back and open. And coming back through to center and releasing that and perhaps shaking the hands out a little bit, maybe taking a few shoulder rolls, forward and back, letting go. And we'll take the legs out in front of us now. And as if you were holding on to a beach ball or a volleyball, we're going to take a circular motion with the arms as we hold the low body kind of in this modified boat position. So you're taking the arms over towards the left, leaning back a little bit over towards the right, and then lifting up and pressing center. So up and over and reaching up towards center. And you can take that in the opposite direction, reaching up and over, and then pressing forward, leaning back, reaching up and over, coming back through center, and pressing up and we'll do each direction one more time, reaching up and over and lifting forward, leaning back, reaching and then coming back to center, taking the hands behind you and just lifting up and open through the chest here, taking a little stretch, a little movement through the neck, through the chest and releasing from that. From here, feel free to stay seated for your cat cow pose or come into a kneeling position, taking the fingertips and spreading them. And inhaling, reaching the tailbone up, reaching the chest forward. And then exhale, rounding through the upper back, drawing the shoulder blades apart, tucking the chin and inhaling open. Taking that a few more times at your own pace, perhaps pausing in one position or in the other. Taking a few more rounds there if you'd like. And then we've got the option to turn the hands so that the fingertips are facing back towards you. So turning the hands so the fingertips are facing towards you instead of away from you. If you're seated, you can take one hand and um, press it back to get that stretch through the wrist if you don't want to be on all fours. If you're on four, all fours, you can take a little bit of gentle movement here, just being really um, conscientious of not moving too quickly. So sliding a little bit forward, a little bit back, maybe experimenting with a little tiny circle in one direction and a little tiny circle in the other direction. Just being really conscientious of not stretching too far. And then turning the hands back into their um, normal way that we've got our hands in an all fours position with the fingertips facing away from you. We'll take our 
right hand. So it's a little bit more center, almost directly underneath the face. And we'll inhale up and open with that left arm, keeping the hips relatively square. And then exhale, bring it back down and inhale, open it up. If you'd like to here, it can be helpful to have the feet and knees a little bit wider than hip width distance. So there's a little more range in order to open the chest up. Not a couple more times, stretching up and open, maybe following with your gaze. And last time, reaching up and open. Of course, you can do this from a seated position as well. And exhaling here, if you're seated, you can take your um, right arm and pull your arm across you. Otherwise, we're taking that um, left arm, threading it through, right arm can reach forward, and we'll reach the hips back into a child's pose. Left hand can be reaching up towards the ceiling, hips reach back. You can rest your left ear kind of down on the mat, side of the face, feeling that stretch. Some people even like to take the right hand and bring it over towards the left hip. That's perfectly fine as well and rest it at the low back. Experiment with that. You could walk those right fingertips a little bit more forward if you wanted to. Continuing to reach the hips back. And then coming back through to center. And we'll take that left hand so it's a little bit more directly underneath the face. Feet can be a little bit wider. Knees can be a little bit wider than hip width distance. And from here, reaching that right arm up, stretching the chest open, making sure you're not dumping a lot of weight into the left shoulder. So you're reaching up and out of the left shoulder. And then exhale, bring the arm back down and inhale, lift it up. Feeling that stretch through the side waist, through the chest, the shoulders, taking it in a pace and range of motion that's appropriate for your body. And last time, reaching up and then exhaling, threading that right arm through. And you can sink the hips back to child's pose. Walk the left arm forward or take that left hand to the low back or to the right hip. Some people like that variation. That's perfectly fine too. You can rest the side of the face down towards the mat so that that right ear is kind of down towards the mat. Getting a stretch through the outer shoulder on that right side. And inhale, come back up. Meeting in child's pose. If you don't want child's pose, you can stay seated or you can come to your belly for windshield wiper legs. If you're in child's pose, we're going to walk both hands over towards the left and just kind of press gently out through the right outer hip, getting a stretch through the whole right side body. And then walk both hands over towards the left, pressing that left outer hip out towards the left, getting a stretch now through the left side body. And coming back to center. From here, we'll press back into downward facing dog, pedaling out the feet. Maybe coming to the very balls of the feet and then pressing the heels down, just kind of going for a little walk, rolling through the feet. If it feels better to come into stillness right away, that's fine as well. Maybe bringing a bit of bend to the knees so that the spine can be long. Chest can be open as you press the chest back towards the thighs. And then take a foot step or so um, closer. So you're in a very narrow downward facing dog. We're going to take the right hand and reach it back towards the back of the left leg. So a twisting down dog, neck can be long, head can be heavy. 
you can kind of take a peek out kind of underneath that left armpit. And then replace the right hand, grab a hold of the right calf with the left hand. Neck is long, peeking underneath the right armpit now. Keeping space between right hip and right shoulder. And then taking that left hand back to the mat and walking the feet all the way forward to the top of the mat. We'll take a halfway lift here, reach long through the chest. And on the next exhale, soft, soft knees, fold forward, rooting through the feet, pinky edge, big toe edge, and heel, rooting through the feet as we rise up to standing, reaching up here, inhaling, gaze can come up, and then bringing the head and shoulders towards neutral, kind of plugging the shoulders back down as the fingertips continue to reach up. We'll take the left hand to the right wrist and take a side bend over towards the left, pressing out gently through the right outer hip, keeping biceps kind of towards the ears a little bit in line with the ears. Inhaling center, switching the clasp and reaching over towards the right, pressing out gently through the left outer hip, rotating the left arm and left shoulder open so they're not coming forward too much. Trying to pretend like we're between two planes of glass. Inhaling center, exhaling, sweeping those arms behind us. We'll take the hands to the low back, we'll lift the chest. And exhale, arms can come wide or you can keep the hands at the hips as you fold forward, keeping that hinge at the hip, lengthen the spine. Knees are soft. And if it's okay for you with those soft knees, we're gonna lace the fingers and just place the thumbs kind of at the nape of the neck, bringing a little traction into the neck, a little heaviness. So the head is really heavy, crown of the head towards the floor, hands rest gently at the back of the head, knees are bent, so the belly and chest can rest on the thighs. And then gently release Placing those hands, planting on the shins or the mat as we inhale, take a halfway lift, lengthen the legs, reach the chest forward. And exhale, fold forward. From here, we're stepping back into a lunge position, right leg back, left leg forward. You can be high or low in this lunge. If it's okay with your right knee, you're gonna be low in the lunge with the knee back and away from the right hip. We're gonna take the arms so that they kind of dangle at our sides. Palms of the hands can be um, up towards the sky. And then we'll sweep those arms forward, lift up, and then exhale, pull down as if you were pulling something down from the ceiling, coming into goalpost arms. And then as you inhale, taking the hands down, sweeping them along the mat, inhaling up and exhaling, pulling down. Inhaling, sweeping through, exhaling, pulling down and taking that at your own pace, kind of a circular motion, staying steady through the low body. If you prefer to be in a standing lunge position, that's absolutely fine. If this doesn't feel good to be in the low position or just that you prefer the high lunge, absolutely fine. Taking that one last time, inhaling up and exhaling, pulling down, opening through the chest. And then we'll plant the hands down onto the mat. If your right knee was down on the mat, just curl under the toes and we'll step back to downward facing dog. Perhaps once again, pedaling out the feet or finding stillness or any other type of fluid kind of organic movement that you'd like to take in the pose is absolutely, absolutely fine. Shaking the head gently, no, releasing tension from the jaw, the face, the neck. On the next inhalation, we'll make our way into plank position, squeezing the outer thighs in, 
lifting the navel up towards the spine, reaching the crown of the head forward, reaching the heels back. And exhaling, lowering all the way down to the mat. Taking the arms out to the sides, almost again like they were in that goal post arm, but we're going to tend the fingers. So we're lifting the palms of the hands, fingertips on the mat. Inhale for a small cobra in this variation. So lift the chest up. And then as you exhale, take the right ear down towards the mat. And then inhale, lift center. You can kind of roll center, release that left shoulder down a little bit more as you take the um, left ear down, taking the gaze out towards the right. And then inhale up, kind of taking that right shoulder down, right ear down, and making that a fluid movement from side to side, kind of rolling through the shoulders, lifting up center, rotating down, feeling that movement in the neck, the shoulders, the shoulder blades, through the chest. And then pausing center, you can take the hands to make a little pillow, stacking them one on top of the other and windshield wipering the legs back and forth. Releasing the legs back down, engaging the quadricep muscles, rooting the pelvis down onto the mat, reaching the tailbone towards the heels. And we'll take our arms at our sides so they're floating just above the mat. Crown of the head reaches forward. You can lift the chest a bit here, or if you'd like to, you can place the fingers at the low back, lifting the chest, coming into locust pose. Legs can lift or they can stay resting on the mat, but not exactly resting, they're pretty active. Either way is fine. Glutes and hamstring muscles are engaged. Chest is lifting, but not too terribly much. Reaching forward and then exhaling, releasing from that. You can take a rest here or you can press back to downward facing dog. Again, pedaling out the feet or not. Taking a couple breaths and downward facing dog, pressing chest back towards the thighs, releasing the neck and jaw from unneeded tension here. And we'll step the right foot forward, finding that low or high lunge position, whatever your preference is. Bringing the arms kind of down to your sides, belly and chest, kind of resting on that right leg a bit. Palms of the hands up towards the ceiling. And we'll inhale, sweep them up, and exhale, pull down into goal post arms. Inhaling, sweeping up, and exhaling, pulling down. Taking that a few more times at your own pace, kind of finding that circular motion. Moving with the breath, finding stability in the low body. And then planting the hands down onto the mat, curling under those left toes if they weren't already, and stepping left foot forward to meet the right. We'll inhale for our halfway lift. And exhale, fold in, rooting through the feet to rise, sweeping the arms up, coming all the way to standing. And exhaling, releasing the arms down. We're going to step the left foot back into warrior one. Right knee is bent, left toes turn up towards the top left corner of the mat. Make sure your base is wide enough um, so that you don't feel unsteady here rooting down through all sides of the feet, and then just isometrically hugging the legs towards one another for a little more stability. Grounding down through big toe edge and pinky edge of the foot. Arms can reach up if you'd like to, 
really activating through the left glutes. And then reaching all the way forward, arms can swing back and then inhaling, lifting up. So we're keeping the legs steady and moving the upper body. Just kind of a swinging of the arms back, chest and crown of the head reach forward and then a swinging of the arms on the way up. Pausing in that up position, we'll take the hands to lace here at the low back. You can stay here if you'd like, lifting the chest or coming all the way through to humble warrior, taking right shoulder to the inner right knee and perhaps reaching those laced fingers up towards the ceiling, crown of the head is heavy. For more stability, grabbing hold of a block, a chair, the floor, rather than having those laced fingers up towards the sky. And pushing through that front right foot, straightening the right knee, stepping the feet maybe a little bit closer together, arms at your sides. A few options here. We're gonna come into a warrior three and if you'd like to, you can take your left elbow under your right for eagle arms in warrior three. If that does not feel steady, please feel free not to do it. You can have hands on your hips, at your heart center, on a chair. Otherwise, we're taking that left leg back into warrior three with those eagle arms. Crown of the head reaches forward, left leg reaches back big toe mound on that right side, really firms down. And then releasing those eagle arms, we're pulling that left knee all the way forward, standing up tall, left knee towards the chest, left foot can flex. Maybe a few ankle rotations. And then placing that left foot down, finding equal standing in the feet. And we'll take the right leg back for warrior one. Right toes angle up towards that top right corner of the mat. Glutes are engaged on that right side. Checking in with your foundation, making sure you feel pretty steady here. Arms can reach up. And we'll keep that stability in the low body as we hinge forward, reach those arms back and inhale, reach the arms back up again. Keeping that left knee pretty steady as best as possible, trying to be conscientious of it wobbling from right to left or front to back. Continuing to press through the foot as you move. And then the next time you're up, you can stay up. Taking laced fingers to the low back, if that's okay for your shoulders. Lifting the chest, staying here, or beginning to bow forward to humble warrior. Left shoulder comes towards the inner left knee. Crown of the head gets heavy. Fingertips reach up towards the sky. As always, if this doesn't feel steady, hands are coming down to something a little more solid. And inhaling, pressing through that left foot, straightening the left leg, releasing the arms. If you like, right elbow will come under the left for eagle arms. Otherwise, any arm variation that you like, hands at the heart or reaching back or grabbing a hold of something solid. And making our way to warrior three, 
with whatever arm variation works for you. Right heel reaches actively back as if you are pressing that foot into something. Neck is long. Torso is reaching. Engaging that big toe mound as best as possible to help with balance. And then swinging that right leg all the way forward. Hugging that right knee in towards the chest, perhaps taking some ankle circles. And then releasing that right foot down. From here, let's take the feet wide on the mat. And you can have the feet so that they're, um, you know, maybe straight or maybe a little bit pigeon toes, toed with the heels slightly out and the toes slightly in. We'll hinge forward to a wide legged forward fold taking both hands down. And we did this movement last week, if you were here. Um, so it might be a little bit familiar. We're gonna bend deeply or relatively deeply through the knees, reaching the hips back, almost like a pretty wide squat type position. Elbows are nice and loose, bent. And then as we inhale, we're straightening knees, straightening elbows, and then reaching the left arm up and open for a twist. Exhaling, bending back down into everything, knees and elbows bend, hips reach back. Inhale, press up and straighten and reach that right arm up as we twist. Taking that a few more times, exhaling down and bending, inhaling, reaching up and open kind of making that movement relatively fluid for you as you bend the elbows and knees and then straighten the elbows and knees. Inhaling and exhaling. So you're exhaling center and inhaling as you expand the arms and open up. One or two more times in each direction. And then releasing from that, hands can climb up the legs or come to the hips, root down through the big toe mounds and lift all the way up to standing. Sliding the left hand down the left leg and reaching the right arm up and over. Gaze can be straight forward or the gaze can be up. And again, this is one where you're kind of between two doors or two planes of glass where you can't really have part of the body reaching way forward or back. Just trying to stay in your little space. So the bicep is kind of, bicep muscles are kind of close here to that um, right ear. And we'll inhale all the way back up. Take that left arm up so the bicep muscles are kind of close to the ear and then keep it relatively close as you lean over now towards the right. Pressing the hips gently forward. And inhaling, coming back up. Hands come to the low back, we'll lift the chest and release from that. Step the feet back together. And we're going to, let's make our way down to the mat now. And you can hug the knees in towards the chest. Flex and point the feet so one foot flexes, the other one points. Pedaling the feet a little bit back and forth that way. And then we're going to cross that right ankle just on top of the left thigh. Gently push the right leg away from you. 
with the right hand. And then go ahead and grab a hold of the back of the left leg. Maybe taking a little side to side motion and then eventually settling in. You can use your right elbow to push the right inner thigh away from you. And then you can take just a little lean here over towards the left. Kind of exploring the space where the stretch feels the best for you right now. And being receptive. Inviting in that sense of openness, openness to experience. If you'd like to, you can keep your legs in that same configuration. Take the arms wide and bring that right foot all the way down as you twist towards the left. Right knee is up towards the ceiling. Gaze can kind of be up towards the ceiling as well. I'm just taking a few breaths here. Keeping that right knee up. And then coming back through to center. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side, crossing that left ankle just on top of the right knee and hugging everything in. Using that left elbow here to just kind of push the left inner thigh away. Maybe rotate just a little bit over towards the right. Being curious about that space where the stretch can be felt the best. A couple more breaths here. And then either keeping the legs in this same configuration and rotating them over towards the right, or you can have your legs in a more traditional, um, just one knee stacked on top of the other for your twist. Breathing here. And then making your way back to center and just determining if there's any other stretches, poses, movements that you'd like to take. Taking the time to do those. And then eventually settling into stillness. I'd invite you here to take one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. Connecting with that grounding of the present moment, that grounding of the breath right here, the heart beating right here, right now. If this does not speak to you, you can have your hands in a different way. perhaps using the breath and the beating heart as a way to anchor to this moment. Being receptive to what is. Whether it's exactly how you want it to be or a little bit different than you want it to be.
I have a quote to share with you. It's a bit more of a mantra than a quote that I came across this morning. It says, allow things to come and go. Keep your heart as open as the sky. So perhaps taking a moment here to reconnect with any intentions that you made. Kind of sealing those in for the day, for the moment. Taking a longer and deeper inhalation. And letting go with a longer, deeper exhalation. I'd like to thank you all very much for sharing your practice and sharing your positive energy with each other and with me. Namaste.